live stream it is so good to have you with us this morning if you are new then comment new in the comment section down below or send us a dm and then we can get to know you a little bit better thank you to everyone who joined us on the zoom call last week i absolutely love getting to see everyone from church's face every single sunday it's a little bit of normality in my week if you want to join us on that zoom call this week then just send us a dm and we can let you know and post a link to the call back to you we have posted our children's work on our Facebook this morning. So if your children want to get involved with doing some colouring in along with the talk this morning, then just download them from there. Also, if you want your children's work to be featured in our live stream each week, then you just send that to us by Tuesday at noon and we can feature that. This week we had some amazing colour in it entries from Dorcas and from Esther. I was massively impressed and it really got me in the mood to do some colouring in as well. This week, because it's Pentecost Sunday, Colin is going to be leading us in an amazing talk on how to be more spiritual. And if you want to catch up with any of our talks from throughout the season, including John's Survival Guide series, then just catch up on our Facebook, YouTube or website for that. Okay, and now on to our song time of worship. Savior, I am found. This is living. 
Hallelujah. Father, we praise you because you are good and you are always good. And we thank you that you're always good. And we lift up those that are in need right now. We lift up those who are suffering, those who are alone, those who are suffering anxiety and stress. We lift them up to you so that they will know that they're not alone. But there is a wonderful and amazing God who loves them and cares for them. And we ask you into this place right now awesome God we ask that you'll send your spirit into the home of every single person who's watching right now we pray that you'll make us one one spirit in all places holy God we ask for you to have your way in our hearts in our minds in our homes in our church in our town and in the lives of all of those who need you awesome God we ask that you'll bless the word that's about to be given you'll give it a home in our hearts and we ask that in all things, your will be done. Awesome God. And in Jesus' name, amen. Hi, my name's Colin. And I want to introduce you to the next phase of our survival guide. How to be spiritual. We've been doing absolutely brilliantly with this series so far. We've looked at all aspects of uh, surviving. Uh, but today I want to look at something else. It's the church's birthday. It's the day of Pentecost. And so therefore, I think we need to look at uh, the, the spiritual aspect or the spiritual dimension. And, and what I'm going to look at today will help you to get into the spirit, get into the spirit of God. Let's start with this concept really of who we are no matter who we are what our background is what our circumstances or situation is there is always something that we know we know this inside we know that in our hearts and in our spirits there's something beyond there's something that we're uh, aiming for asking for that's why people get into all kinds of different uh, spiritual experiences chasing after this and chasing after that but i want to look at this uh, today. Today, like I said, we celebrate the birthday of the Christian church, the day of Pentecost, the day the Holy Spirit came, the day that 120 frightened and confused men and women became world changers. They went beyond. But before we look at this amazing transformation for you, yourself, personally, let's look at you and who you are. We, we, are made up of elements. The elements that we're made up of is 65% of us are oxygen, 18% of us are carbon, 10% hydrogen, 1.5% calcium, and so on and so on. There's quite a number of elements that we're actually made up of. If we want to boil it all down into that, uh, value-wise, that arrives at something like $5. So in terms of its elements, that's what you're worth, about $5. But then there's the collection of parts, the, the bits that go to make us up. Uh, as a, uh, a collection of parts, we know we have a brain and lungs and heart and all those kind of things. Uh, 
And if we look at them as a value, as a commodity, the heart alone is worth half a million pounds. You as a person would probably be worth about four million pounds. In actual fact, the the market uh, on, on for body parts in the world is, is 1.5 billion pounds. And there's a value there. But you know, it doesn't stop there. As far as God is concerned, we go beyond. And he went beyond. And in actual fact, the Bible tells us that you're not just a body, you're not just elements, you're not just bits and pieces that fit together. The Bible tells me and the Bible tells you that we are a soul, a living soul. And our soul is made up of our mind, our emotions, our will. And everyone listening to this will know full well that there are times when our emotions overwhelm us. There are times when our mind just runs off in all kinds of directions. Most of us will know something about a person who's strong-willed or weak-willed. And that is us. That's our personality. That's the seat of our personality. And that's called the soul. Now, I would tell you that the soul cannot be purchased. There is nothing on earth that man possesses that can actually buy the soul of another man. There is nothing that existed or has existed or will ever exist that can actually purchase your soul. But that doesn't mean to say that it is worthless. It means to say that it is priceless. But a price was actually paid. A price was paid by God on the cross. Jesus Christ paid that price for our soul and it cost God everything. Somebody once said that God had to bankrupt heaven in order to save your soul. That's how God sees you. Absolutely priceless. But you know, it goes beyond that. It goes further than your soul. It actually goes. The Bible talks about this. You have a body. You have a soul, but you also have a spirit. And the spirit is another matter entirely. We found the body. We go beyond the body. We then go beyond the soul, which plugs us into God. It plugs us into the eternal. It plugs us in from the natural to the supernatural. And that is our spirit. The only problem with that is that whether our spirit is alive or not, or whether our spirit is functioning, whether it is active or not. And that's what brings us to today. Now, I just want to give you a very quick parable or a very quick illustration. Just imagine there was a commodity that the whole world wanted and needed and craved after. And somebody said, we're going to build a factory. We're going to build this, this uh, huge factory, which is going to be able to produce this commodity that everybody wants. And so they got the best designers and they got the best architects and, and surveyors and engineers. They got the best designers for uh, ergonomics and all those kind of things. And they built this amazing, amazing facility to produce this product. And then the day came when everything was right and everything was in place. And what they did was they decided to have an official opening and somebody pushed a button or threw a switch to actually activate this factory, but nothing happened. They found out that nobody had plugged it in, that nobody had connected it to the power. And that's like us. Our mind, our emotions, our will, our soul needs connecting to the power, which is the power of God. And I know that many, many people chase many, many things looking for this activation and they will try to activate the spiritual side but really and I'm not saying that they won't at least for the time being get some form of comeback to that but it doesn't last not only does it not last it doesn't fulfill not only does it not fulfill but you probably end up worse than when you started you see everybody is looking for something beyond. So where does it start? Well, we have to start somewhere. Now I want to just give to you uh, a verse from the Bible. And this verse from the Bible is found in the Acts of the Apostles in chapter 1 and verses 5 to verse 8. And there are two verses there, verse 5 and verse 8. It says this, Jesus, first of all, he said, 
wait in Jerusalem until the Holy Spirit comes. And then the second one in verse 8, he said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. You receive it. Now, this was nothing new. There's nothing new in the Bible. In actual fact, even at the very beginning of Jesus' ministry in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 3 and verse 11, John the Baptist said, I will baptize you in a natural substance called water. But he that comes after me, whose shoes I could never hope to untie, he will baptize you in the Holy Spirit and with fire. So the concept of that existed even in the Old Testament itself. For as long as man has always existed, there has been this hunger, this desire for spiritual identity. But with us, it starts with Jesus. Jesus is the one that actually brings us into that dimension, that spiritual dimension. And so therefore, we've looked at ourselves. Now, I want you to look at Jesus just for a moment, because what Jesus did was he lived a life that was exemplary, but filled with the Holy Spirit. Like I said, when John the Baptist said that, he then ended up baptizing Jesus. And we know the story then where heaven opened and a dove came down and sat upon him. And then this voice said, this is my son in whom I'm well pleased. But who is this Jesus that lived 2000 years ago? Well, let me just read something. We're told that he was a man who was born in an obscure village, the child of a peasant woman. And he grew up in another obscure village where he worked as a carpenter until he was 30. And then for three years, he was an itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book. He never held an office. He never owned a home. He never had a family. He never went to college. He never put his foot inside a big major city. He never traveled more than 200 miles from the very place where he was born. He never did one of the things that actually accompany greatness. He had no credentials but himself. He had nothing to do with this world except the naked power of his personality and his divine manhood. While still a young man, the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. One of them decided to deny him. He was turned over to his enemies and he went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. The executioners gambled for the only piece of property he had on earth whilst he was still dying. And that was his coat. When he was dead, he was taken down and laid in a borrowed grave through the pity of a friend. Twenty long centuries have come and gone. And today he is the centrepiece of the human race. He's the leader of the greatest column of progress in this world. I am far within the mark when I say that all the armies that ever marched and all the navies that were ever built and all the parliaments that ever sat and all the kings that were ever reigned put together have not affected the life of man upon this earth as powerfully as that one single solitary life. Today, in 2020, this day, more people have come to Jesus and received him as their saviour of Lord today than they did yesterday. And more will come tomorrow than will come today. The church right now inhabits 40% of the population of this planet will claim to be Christian. Yet none of this would have been possible without the Holy Spirit. And so I think it's only right that we look at our whole lives in not just a concept of physically who we are, but spiritually who we are. And so I want to, just in a few minutes right now is to tell you how to be spiritual, how to come into, how to lock into, how to plug into your soul, plugging into the very presence and purpose of God himself.
Let's go beyond. Let's make it personal. You and God. There are a number of words translated into English in the Bible from the original text. One of them we've already looked at, Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. Jesus said, you receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. I want to look at that word power in a moment. But there's another word that we sometimes translate as power, and it's found in John's Gospel, chapter 1 and verse 12. It was Jesus who said this. He said, as many that come on to me, that put their faith and their trust in me, I will give them the power to become a son of God. I will give them the power. Now, the word there, which is translated power in some versions of the Bible, actually means I will give them the right, the authority. Just imagine if you were given the authority to open uh, a door or, or unlock a gate. You were given that authority and nobody could question that. Well, that's power. Power in that circumstance means that we have authority. But that's not what Jesus said here. He said to the disciples, you've already got that authority. I've already given it to you. But now you're going to receive power. Now, the word that Jesus used for power, though, means I'm going to give you the ability. I'm going to give you the ability not just to receive that which I've got for you, but to live in it to excel in it without question whatsoever. Do you know the Bible says that there is no other name given among men by which we can access the power and the authority of God. So right now I want to show you, I want to tell you quite simply how. And the first thing is, we've already said this, John said it last week, when he prayed that prayer of salvation, when he said to someone, uh, those of you out there that don't know Jesus, pray this simple prayer. Ask Jesus Christ into your life. Ask him to take away all the mess and the rubbish that is there and to come in and give you a brand new life. And if you ask that question and you mean it, then he will. And we need, first of all, to come to Jesus. That's the first power. That's the authoritative power. Now, if you're not quite sure again, what I'd, I'd like to do, I'd like to send you a leaflet free of charge. I'll even send you a Bible with it. But I'll send you this leaflet free of charge, which says steps to peace with God. I want you to know Jesus as your personal Savior and Lord. Once you know Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior and Lord, then the world opens up. Then Jesus said, something is going to happen. I'm going to give you the ability to live as a Christian. Now, to the ability, which is that second word power there, it only comes from Jesus. It doesn't come anywhere else. He's the only one that can give that authority. And so therefore, he's the one that baptizes us into the Holy Spirit. So we've trusted him for our salvation. We now come to him and we ask him a simple question. Lord, I want you to baptize me with the Holy Spirit. I want you to fill me with the Holy Spirit. And so on those two things you've got. A prayer for salvation. And the other one, you've got a prayer for the ability to live in that salvation, which is through the power and the anointing of the Holy Spirit. So they're the two very, very simple ways forward. Now, there are ways in which we can help you to take that step. In fact, uh, I just want to give you a, a classic book. And if you want, uh, Send us a message in and I, I will actually send you this, not to keep because it's the only one I've got. I, I will send you this, which you can read for seven days. It's a it's a classic by Dennis Bennett. It's called Nine O'Clock in the Morning. And I know so many Christians that have their lives have been transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit as they've received the Holy Spirit through reading the words of this book. And so therefore, I want to make that offer to you even today. After you receive the Holy Spirit, 
Ask Jesus to come and baptize you. Then, and this is where it gets really, really amazing. You then ask the Holy Spirit for his gifts. You ask the Holy Spirit. The Bible talks about this many, many times. You've only got to look at the life of Jesus and see how Jesus lived. Again, John touched on this last week. What an amazing guy this was. Nobody was as smart as Jesus. Nobody could actually put in place what Jesus could, the miracles that Jesus did. And because we can be baptized in the Holy Spirit, it means that we can join that band. We can also do that. We can also be baptized in the Holy Spirit and operate in the gifts of the Spirit. The Bible talks about this, talks about the words of wisdom. It talks about the words of knowledge. It talks about miracles, the transformation power that takes place on that. Now, asking the Holy Spirit for these gifts, that's your, your next step. But then there's a step after that, and that gets a little bit tough. And the step after that is we've then got to start to operate in those gifts. And again, this is where Jesus said when he, he talked about the ability, it means through faith, we can do all this kind of stuff. That is spiritual. That is something which is dynamic in itself. Now, one of the things I just close this, I'll wrap this up right now. OK, and I think this is very important. It's not really important for those of you here who don't know Jesus Christ yet. But it's for those who do know Jesus Christ, but are saying to themselves, well, I've not I'm not there yet. I haven't gotten to that place yet. I haven't gotten to that wonderful presence of God through the Holy Spirit. I haven't received the Holy Spirit. Well, one of the best ways of receiving the Holy Spirit, and again, this is not that difficult, not that hard at all, is through the medium of praise and worship. How many of you know that God enters praise and worship? You might be on the uh, the giving end of starting to worship and praise God, but God is also on the receiving end, and then He moves in to our praise and worship through the Holy Spirit. And some of the things that happen through praise and worship, those of you who've been to uh, the major camps like Soul Survivor, you know full well that the Holy Spirit is there. Praise and worship is so powerful, it's so awesome. And again, I would like to give you a book or lend you a book, should I say. And again, this is a classic. Now, I'm offering this to those Christians who want to go deeper, who want to go higher, those who are in the worship band or those who are not in the worship band. Uh, it's called The Power of Praise and Worship by a guy called Terry Law. And it was one of the most influential books I've ever read on this question of spirit-filled worship. So if you want to borrow that, by all means do. By the way, these two books, Praise and Worship and Nine O'Clock in the Morning, I'll, I'll lend them to you for seven days. But after seven days, if there's a queue on, you've got to pass it on to someone else. Well, lastly, and this is it, I'm going to finish here right now. The last thing that we do in order to be spiritual, in order to receive Everything that God has got for us is then to share it. Is then to go to someone else and share the experience that God has given to us. Now, God then strengthens that experience. But then when we've shared it, we then exercise it. Now, just one thing regarding exercise. And again, very, very simple. How many of you, when you first started to walk, didn't fall on your bum? Of course you did. You fell down. Sometimes you hurt yourself, but you got back up again. How many of you have started something and messed it up, but then started again? Well, it's like that with the gifts of the Holy Spirit. You might not get it right perfect every time, but God is patient. The Holy Spirit is a gentleman and he will guide you and he will take you. And boy, you will see things and know things and understand things the likes of which you could never do without the Spirit moving in your heart. So let's recap on that. First of all, receive Jesus Christ as your Saviour and Lord. The second thing, 
ask him to baptize you into the Holy Spirit. The third thing is receive the Holy Spirit and ask him for spiritual gifts. And then lastly, very, very simple, get out, get operating in those gifts of the Holy Spirit. If you want to know what they are, let us know what, what you, uh, you, you need to know and we will tell you. If you want to make a start on this journey, it's as simple as praying. And sim praying is just asking. And so let's do that. Let's pray together. Have you ever said these words before? It doesn't matter. God hears you. Father God, I just thank you for Jesus. I thank you, Lord, that Jesus died on that cross for me. Lord, and I just pray that Jesus will come into my heart, and into my life and fill me and flood me with his grace and his love and his power. And Lord Jesus, I just pray that you will baptize us into the Holy Spirit. You will take us into that realm, Lord, that we would never understand or know unless you showed us. And so, Lord, I just pray for each and every one of us in this place here today. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, that's it for today. If you've got any questions, please send them in. If you want any information, please ask for the information. Let us be there for you. Next week, I want you to tune in again because we've got another brilliant week for you in this survival guide. So have a good Pentecost and a good Pentecostal week. God bless you and I'll see you next week. Thank you, Colin, for that amazing message. Remember, if your children have been calling along with today's service, then you can send that through to us on Facebook so that they could be featured in next week's live stream. But remember to do that by Tuesday noon so that we can get them all in. Remember also there are so many ways that you can support Prescott Community Church's mission during this season. You can do that by a standing order, by a text or the gift app, so that's G-I-B-T in the app store. If you're confused by any of those options then please let us know and we're more than happy to talk you through it. Keep an eye on the side at the start and the end of the live stream today to see what we're getting up to during the week. See our Facebook page for encouraging prayers, encouraging posts and just to see what we're up to whether that's Zoom calls or Bible studies. And now it's time for the final song.
Like courage in the fight I hear you call my name Jesus, I am coming Walking on the waves Reaching for your I'll sing the joy of the